Welcome back. Let's talk about Bandhan Bank now. The stock is up almost about 5 odd percent. We had some uh, decent numbers come through in the form of the deposit growth of 21 percent. The advances went up about 15 odd percent or so. Uh, but the margins have come in at an all time low of 6.5 percent. Chandrasekhar Ghosh, the MD and CEO of Bandhan Bank, joins us now uh, to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. If you can start by telling us what is the forecast for loan growth? in the quarters to come because the industry is growing at a very rapid pace. So what is the kind of growth rate that you would be looking at uh, both for the full year as well as for FY24? Uh, good morning. And uh, if I see that, that they are uh, up to the three quarter, our uh, uh, business growth has come in the deposit is a 21% and the advances has come 14%. So if I if I not count on that the the write off, if I write off it is an eleven percent. Other side is there the our business always is coming to the fourth quarter, and fourth quarter always given a good business growth. And this third quarter we also see that the very good new to bank customer are are uh, added a very good number which is the nine point four lakhs. So, which have been shows that the fourth quarter also will come to this the pre-pandemic situation of the growth. So, all together, the the overall total total growth of the financial year 20 to 23 will be uh, uh, will be better than that the 20 and 21. When you say better, can you just give us some numbers? What are you looking at in terms of loan growth in 20 in FY23, and what is it for FY24 in terms of expectations? If you see that the 14 percent growth has come to this, the uh, uh, up to the third quarter and fourth quarter, it will come to the 20 percent and ever. All right. Uh, hi, Mr. Ghosh. Uh, give us a couple of numbers then for FY24. I recall you guiding that you'll grow by around 20 percent odd. So for FY, for the next couple of years, you believe you can grow in excess of around 20 percent. And also your NIMS, well, uh, they had come down, but it was, his, it was hit by that, uh, you know, interest income reversal. Going ahead, and I believe for December, they return back to normalcy. What is the NIM band we should work with? Loan growth and NIM band. Go ahead. No, if you see that the loan growth, we are predicted on that at 2025 and that the CAG are 22 to 25% growth will come to the bank. Second point, okay. your NIM, if you see that our NIM is 6.5% has come to this the uh, uh, quarter three. Uh, there is a two impact happened in here. One impact has come because of uh, large of the portfolio, which is the pandemic uh, pain we have been taken that have been over in the last quarter and we reverse the uh, uh, interest so that it has been shown on that. This is the one. Second point on that is an overall market of the uh, 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 of India. It is a scene that the budget rate has increased, so cost of fund also have increased. And these okay. the two factors have been impacted uh, to this, the 6.5% the of my name. But I predict it on that. The next quarter onwards, I have not anything is a reverse for NPA uh, interest. So that will be helped me to come to this, the normal 7.5% and uh, up. Uh, of, of, of our name and the yes uh, market point of view whatever the rate increase by the central bank and i predict it on that very good amount already done on that and uh, if something also increase in the 25 basis point in the next uh, the couple of months uh, we can be take uh, um, to this the bank as a as a cost uh, to increase a little bit of this, the uh, 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 cost of fund maybe a little bit increase, but a NIM will be not uh, 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 retained in the six and a half. It will be increased that more than six and a half on that. Mr. Ghosh, uh, hi, good morning. Uh, you know, is is the peak of stress uh, behind for you in term? You know, slippages in the quarter were still very high, uh, but uh, you know. It's uh, largely from, I, I believe, uh, the already stressed pool. Uh, what about, uh, you know, going forward, what are slippages likely to be and uh, what, what is your guidance on that front? Now, if you see that the sleep is whatever has come to the bank in the last quarter, it has been all over of the pandemic pain we have been taking the book. 
one time. Second point, we see that the second quarter to third quarter, our fresh sleepers has come down 700 crores. And also recovery from second quarter to third quarter has come 100 crores above. And another thing we see that the collection efficiency improved from 95 to 98 to 3% above. And whatever the customer are not paying earlier, so 2% of the customer are not paying earlier, they are now coming down to 1% customer. So mm -hmm. all these the parameter have been shown me. Mm -hmm. The future, only the normal, some sleep is whatever has come as a pre-pandemic, that may be like, um, otherwise there is a no uh, big way uh, will be come on that. Okay. For that uh Sure, got it, got it, sir. So you're saying that a 20 to 25 percent growth is what you're looking at compounded over the next couple of years. Uh, that's the big takeaway from what you've said so far. Just wanted to understand about one gentleman, the head of your operations of the housing finance business, Mr. Suresh Ayer. Uh, has he put in his resignation? And if yes, what is the way forward now in terms of uh, you know who is taking his place at housing finance and what the growth could be? No, if you see that the every of the vertical, we have a, that the very good uh, head of the uh, vertical of the business, of the operation, of the IT, everything we are in a take care. And if it is any bank, I'm not like to say that the he is leaving on that. But if you see that the as a bank, we are always making a succession plan on that the two people under the head. The who are any time, anything, if the bank face, the another two are ready to take call on that. So uh, it is an, uh, the business continuity plan. We are very well, uh, well uh, been developed and accordingly we are making on that. Okay, all right. Mr. Ghosh, I wanted two numbers from you. One is what's the guidance on the credit cost, point number one. And point number two, you know, a couple of brokerages like CLSA, they are banking on your ROE moving to around 20%, 19 to around 20% in the next couple of years. Do you think that's possible? Yes, possible. Because if you see that the, my, my normal, uh, the, the business growth, whatever we are uh, uh, prediction, and that is the 20 to 25%. And the, the, if you see that the 98% of my collection efficiency has come, there is a 2%, 1% will be like to uh, make any collect. And, and 1% is normally seen that the maximum is 2% my credit cost. It can be go to the 2.5% maximum on that. So in that sense, I can I have been confidence on that the ROE will be like to make on that the 20 to 22%. Okay, and mm. credit cost, sir, I missed that number. ROE at 20, 20 to 22% and credit cost? Credit cost may be the another one year we are predicted on that at the 2 to 2.5 percent. 2 to 2 point five. Okay. Uh, finally, you did mention that you'll see a 20 percent growth in your uh, loan growth, right, for FY23. Uh, any kind of outlook for FY24? Uh, is there some caution in the system? Are you finding it tough to grow beyond that 20 percent uh, for FY24? If I see that in the last uh, uh, two years in the pandemic, it's a worst situation of the life of all of us. We cannot feel that the further it, this type of situation will become on that. So in that sense, we see that, that there's a couple of years, uh, next couple of years in the 24 and 25, it will be like to very good growth of India, not only the Bandhan Bank, the total country economy are coming very good compared to the any country of the world. So it will be impacted to the Indian economy growth and Indian business growth. And because of Bandhan is working with the more focus on the retail business, so we see that the very good demand in the ground level. And this, the percentage of the growth is possible by Bandhan Bank. All right. Uh... <clears throat> Thanks very much. Uh, appreciate you joining in. And, uh, you know, we hope that, uh, you know, Bandhan is in for more uh, sort of steadier times, as you indicate. Uh, I mean, a positive guidance on net interest margins uh, should move up from 6, 6.5% to 7.5%, as you said. 
and the uh, bulk of that uh, pain in terms of slippages from COVID era is behind. That's a legacy issue. Thanks very much. Stocks up uh, 5%. I mean, just a quick word on the market as well. Look at that. Uh, a, a whole lot has happened while we were focused on companies. The Nifty is up 122 points. We're at 18,150. We're at the day's highest point. Uh, another 40 points or so, and we'll get to an important uh, kind of uh, the first level to watch out for, uh, which is about 18,191. Uh, that's a 38% retracement of the full fall from all-time highs to the December lows. Uh, so another 40 points, then we'll be talking about uh, further upsides. But this is looking good. Reliance has picked up. Uh, it's up about half a percent, 0.6 percent. A lot of names. LTI, uh, Mindtree is another one which has seen almost a 50, 60 odd rupee intraday move, uh, which uh, gone back to being absolutely flat. We'll highlight some of this stuff in a bit from now. Actually, LTI Mindtree is up three quarters of a percent after selling off about four, four and a half percent early on. Now, JSW Energy is uh, the uh, next company we are going to speak with. They posted a you know, muted set of earnings for the quarter. Profits are down 44%. Margins have also contracted to around 27% from about 42% a year ago. Prashant Jain is Joint Managing Director and CEO at the company. He's joining us uh, right now. Mr. Jain, great to have you with us here. Good morning. Appreciate your time. Could you run us through what happened during the quarter? Uh, it's a muted quarter. Uh, talk to us a little bit about realizations, if you will. What were they like and uh, what's the outlook uh, in this quarter now? Yeah, good morning. So uh, the quarter is muted when we are comparing year on year for the previous quarter because last year we had a October where the power demand was very high and then power was being sold at 20 rupees. Whereas this October, the power demand was growth was actually negative or almost flat. And the fuel prices in this quarter had gone up by 37%. So one side, the power tariff were lower, which was on an average was four rupees for 55 pesa. Fuel prices were as high as seven and a half, eight rupees because of the higher coal price and lower power demand. And that's why the merchant sales volume was lower. But if you look at nine months as a whole, then the power demand has been quite robust, which is 10% higher. And our merchant volumes actually are 65% higher as compared to the nine months previous year. So seasonality also kicks in, and that's where you are seeing the abrasion in this uh, particular quarter. The current quarter, the power demand is uh, very robust. For the January, for first 22 days, the power demand has been at 15% year-on-year uh, increase. Similarly, the merchant tariffs have also inched up from 4 rupees 55 paisa. They are now rolling to 6 rupees 50 paisa to 7 rupees. So mm. all in all, power demand mm. is going forward is good. And uh, also the tariffs are improving. Also, okay. uh, thermal coal prices, which were $240 per ton last quarter on an average, has come down to... $170 in this quarter, this month. So yes. you are seeing a different situation now in the current quarter going forward, the power demand and tariffs are increasing and fuel prices are going down. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jain, good morning. So since the power tariff you said has gone up from four and a half rupees to about six to seven rupees, what could this do to your EBITDA going forward? I mean, on an average, I think you are sitting at about, uh, you know, 600, 650 crores of EBITDA, but you had a range of 800, 900 crores in the preceding quarter as well. Now that power tariffs have gone up, perhaps fuel prices will moderate as well. How much do you think could your quarterly average be? Uh, normalized over the next couple of quarters? Sonia, good morning. We are having a seasonality in our business because in our hydro business, we are having uh, the June and March quarter, they give the maximum EBITDA. And uh, sorry, uh, yeah, June and um, uh, June and September quarter give the maximum EBITDA and then it tapers down. Then second part is, which needs to be seen is that we have a long-term power business, which is close to 83%, which is totally tied up, where 
our fuel price index, everything is a pass through and we recover the fixed cost. It's only the 17% of our portfolio today is into the merchant market, which is totally depend dependent on the power tariffs and the fuel prices. On that 17%, we will be seeing higher volume going forward and also higher EBITDA contribution. As I said, in the first nine months, we have already seen 65% higher volume and also we have seen higher 38% higher contribution as compared to the previous quarter. The power okay. demand is going robust and then we tend to gain with this kind of a scenario. Um, when the fuel prices goes down, our contribution for that 17% portfolio goes yeah. up. Okay. All right. Hi, Mr. Jain. Let's talk about your inorganic growth then. You've gone ahead and you've acquired the uh, IND Bharat Utkal. Give us a couple of numbers out here. One, how much of CAPEX will you incur out here? By when does this plan get commissioned? And a rough EBITDA contribution on this asset itself. Go ahead. So this asset is total project cost is around 2,700 crores. Of that, we have taken from NCLT at 1,050 crores and balance 1,650 crore rupees will be spent on modernization of this plant and also setting up the environmental equipments like FGD and ESPs and all those kind of equipments, et cetera. We are expecting between 12 months to 24 months, this plant will get commissioned. The actual situation we will be able to tell you in next three months when we are opening up the equipments because this plant was down and we were not in a position to open the equipments and see the internal condition. But between 12 months to 24 months, we will be doing it. And this project is being built at uh, less than 4 crore rupees a megawatt and it is a pithead plant where the fuel price will be approximately 1 rupee 30 paisa to 1 rupee 50 paisa. So we are expecting that we will be making uh, equity IRR in excess of 25 to 40% on this particular asset. Oh, all right. That's fairly impressive. Just wanted to ask you about the other acquisition as well, the Mitra acquisition. I recall you, you you were guiding that it closes some some part of 2022, I think, the end of that. But that's got Correct. postponed. When does this get closed off? And also, the street was hoping that that EBITDA from around, I think, 1,200 crores moves to around 1,650 crores. Uh, yeah. Which year does this happen? When does it get closed? And how do you see this EBITDA contribution coming out? Go ahead. Yeah, Nigel, you are right. Uh, we were expecting that it will get closed by 31st uh, December. But, you know, there are 17 lenders and then... Each lender has to go to the, their board and sometimes they take uh, it gets a little bit delayed. It's a matter of days. I am expecting any time this month or uh, early February, this transaction will get closed. And after that, we will do the consolidation of that particular project and take over. So it is going, it's a matter of days now, not even weeks. Second thing is that uh, once we take over the asset, it's going to take 12 months maximum to do the improvement plan. Uh, to improve the EBITDA from 1,250 crore to 1,650 crore. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jain, for uh, joining in and speaking to CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time today. Well, that's JSW Energy. They talk about how the power tariffs were lower in the quarter gone by, but now things have definitely improved. Fuel prices were higher as well, but now power demand has gone up significantly. For the market, by the way, it's still holding with good gains. Mitesh Thakkar joins in uh, to give us his view. Mitesh, it's a decent opening, uh, 120 points higher now for the Nifty. You think we could build on to our gains for the rest of the day? And what is the outlook on individual stocks? So one, I think uh, it's a decent opening, but there's a good follow through as well. I think the key here is the bank Nifty, which has kind of broken out of some minor consolidation and therefore 43,400 now is the target for the bank Nifty. That could add strength to the Nifty also. So I think, as I said, I think you know, we are most likely heading towards that 18,200 to 50 zone and maybe possibly beyond that. So that's the key idea. I have two buy calls right now. Uh, Hero Motors is a buy. Keep a stop just below levels of uh, 2770 uh, here, and a target of around 2835 can be looked at. And MGL, the gas stock is breaking out nicely. That's a buy. Uh, here, I would recommend a stop below 870 and a target of around 90. Uh <clears throat> okay, you know, uh, just a few other names uh, where Ramitesh, I don't know if you want to come in. Uh, there is uh, something like a Ashapura mine chem, which is up about 11% out of the blue. I mean, you know, started strong, is uh, holding gains so far. Uh, Bikaji is up uh, 3%, recent, not too much price history, uh, but uh, that is looking strong. And there is Canfin Homes, where there is a, 
I think that uh, 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 Dam Capital has initiated or upgraded the stock. Stocks at about 545. Uh, any of these, uh, 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 chartically speaking, Mitesh? So, uh, Asha Guru Mind Game is something which I'm not tracking, Prashant. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. won't be able to comment. Bikaji, despite the lim limited uh, uh, price history, I think what is important technically is that, uh, uh, you know, on multiple occasions, uh, starting from uh, sometime in November, the stock has never had a closing above 435, 436 level. And uh, that level has been tested about five, six times. And we are right there again. This time, I think we'll get a closing above this 435, 436. And that should confirm some kind of a breakout, giving a minimum target of 485, possibly even 525 on the upside. So very interesting pattern over there. Uh, Canfin Home Finance, uh, the earlier signs are promising, uh, but I would wait for a breakout. The last swing highs were around uh, 555, 560. I think once we clear that, then I think we'll see an uptrending move. But otherwise, out of the three, what appeals to me the most is Bikaji. Right. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Well, the stock of the moment right now on the downside is Yes Bank. There's a high court order overhang. In case you missed out on the story, the Bombay High Court has quashed writing down of additional tier one bonds of 8,300 crores. So that's a big setback coming in for Yes Bank. Um, RBI and Yes Bank are likely to join the appeal. Lata is here to take us through the details as well as speak to the management as well. Lata, over to you. Yes, unfortunately, the results are getting overshadowed by the High Court order. So let's straight away invite uh, Mr. Prashant Kumar, the Managing Director and CEO of uh, Yes Bank. Uh, good morning, Mr. Kumar. Uh, I know it's, it's a difficult uh, weekend for you, but let's start with the High Court order. Uh, is it uh, confirmed now that the Reserve Bank also will join you in appealing against uh, the High Court order? No, it is confirmed that we would make an appeal in Supreme Court. Okay. And we have been given six weeks until that time. Uh, there is a stay on the order. Okay, so that is one part. Uh, but we'll make an appeal, and we have the legal opinions, uh, mm -hmm. which are having very strong grounds uh, for making an appeal in the Honorable Supreme Court. RBI has not spoken to you, or you haven't spoken to RBI regarding their no, we, also joining? No, no I, we are speaking, but I am saying we can't speak on their behalf. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, fair enough. B by when will you appeal? Will you take uh, uh, too long or will the appeal go very quickly? No, I think we'll, we'll try to do as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll not wait for the six weeks. Okay. No, the reason why I'm asking you is that there is this warrant overhang. You know, when Carlyle and Advent International and uh, CA Basque, all of them uh, invested, they could only invest about 75% of what they wanted. Another 24, 25% is through warrants, which are exercisable from March onwards. Now, with this overhang, do you worry whether those warrants will be exercised? Rather, we are not worried, to be very frank with you. Though we were surprised with this decision, uh, but we are not worried. And why I'm saying this? Because we need to understand the features of these 81 bonds. The first thing, they are the perpetual the discretion to exercise the call option rests with the bank. That is number one. Number two, uh, the coupon or the interest uh, to be paid on these bonds. Uh, again, this discretion to pay the interest rests with the banks, except in those cases where the bank is paying dividend to the equity holders. The third thing, there is no cumulative requirement to pay interest from day one. So it means in a particular year, if you take a call not to pay, uh, then there is no need to uh, accumulate mm. in the coming year. So I think so with I these kind point. of features, yeah. Mm. No, I take your point completely. I mean, I was as shocked as perhaps you were or even more because it looked like a done deal that uh, 81 bonds are uh, uh, something where the contract clearly gives the bank uh, the rights to not pay dividend, uh, to not pay interest, sorry, uh, or uh, uh, even to write them down. And the event requiring the write down was clearly there. The bank was in trouble. So I, I'm not, I'm as surprised as you are. But the high court order is what it is. Now, how yeah. have you even spoken to Carlyle and Advent International? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I think both of them, they are fully supportive, and there is absolutely no downside risk in terms of not exercising uh, the warrant option. So, so I think a they very are big absolutely, headline. Yes. No, they are absolutely with the bank, and from their side, both of them, 
uh, would continue to be part of this journey and would continue to support. And they would like to see the bank moving forward. And I think there has not been any change in their strategy towards the bank. Okay, that's that's a very big positive for uh, uh, other shareholders as well and for the bank, uh, Mr. Kumar. Uh, did you speak with SBI and the, uh, you know, uh, SBI ha ha has an obligation to stay at 26.1% till March 31. Thereafter, they can reduce, uh, but uh, will they go in for it? Any chat at all with them? We have spoken and we are in continuous engagement with all our uh, investor banks. Okay. And absolutely, we are getting the full support and the confidence of all our investor banks. This is also an, a very important headline that uh, they are also backing you. And they are, I suppose, not in a hurry to bring their stake below 26. Is that the kind yeah. of assurance you're getting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Good to hear that, sir. Good to hear that. And all the very best for uh, the appeal as well. But now to come to the results itself. Uh, you know, a couple of troubling points. The slippages are still rising. Uh, you know, one would have thought that the tough period for all banks is over. Uh, when do you see your speaking of slippages? I think we are still able to, say, control our slippage uh, with the 2%. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. uh, this quarter, there was three uh, corporate assets which has slipped mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. the SMA2 categories. So, okay. th so this is one off kind of thing. But I think we have very good control on both retail, MSME, and the mid market. That's and good going share, forward, sir. yeah. So, so I think absolutely good control on the slipping would remain within two percent. Okay. And what about uh, SMA two and SMA one book itself? How much is it? The SMA two and one uh, combined together is now forty five hundred crores, and SMA two has come down to almost eighteen hundred crores. Okay. So the I think other, it has come yeah. down significantly. Mm. Okay. Got that, sir. Uh, well, actually, the uh, increase in deposits is very heartening, but not the increase in advances. What happened? Why only 10.4? The banking sector itself is saying 17.5%. So, so if you normalize for transfer to ARC, uh, then okay. our loan growth is uh, 12%. Okay. But the best part is that if you see our retail loan growth is uh, more than 40%, uh, the mid-market is also more than 30 uh, percent. The issue is that there has been a decline in our large corporate book because of some of the prepayments and also the repayments, which okay. actually we also wanted to. So I think the 18 percent negative growth on the large corporate has bring down the overall uh, loan growth of the bank to 12 percent. Uh, but if you see last quarter, we have dispersed mm -hmm. on 27,000 crores of loans. And for the full year, uh, we would be dispersing almost 90,000 to 1 lakh crores of the new loans. And okay. the most of the growth which are happening on the retail, uh, the MSME, the mid-market, but even on the large corporate, we have dispersed almost 7,000 crores in the quarter three. So I think going forward, our loan growth uh, would be definitely between 15 to 20 percent in the next financial year. Oh, that's extremely good to hear. Uh, Mr. Prashant Kumar, pleasure speaking with you and all the very best uh, for uh, both the year as well as uh, the case, the 81 bonds case. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you so much. Well, I would think uh, the overhang reduces a bit mm -hmm. that the warrant uh, issuers have expressed uh, confidence and that money will come. So it's now only a case of, uh, you know, the uh, Supreme Court taking a different view. I think it's a legalistic view the High Court has taken. So mm -hmm. from the legal sources I spoke with, it looks like they stand a very good chance. Okay, by the way, the market has moved on. It's up almost 125 points. It's the highest point of trade right now. And building on to its gains steadily through the course of the last one hour, the Sensex is now up almost 500 points. The Bank Nifty is the one that's really, uh, you know, charging ahead this morning. Let's dip into a quick break. On the other side, Manisha will be with us. She'll give us all the updates from the commodity space. We'll also talk about some more buzzing stocks. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you know, just three names. Uh, these are largely new age themes I want to highlight. Two, one down, two up. Nika is uh, has made a fresh low, all time low. Uh, from the all time high, it's down seventy percent now. It's come up about one percent off the low of the day, uh, but uh, just completely devastating uh, price performance uh, all the way from listing late in two thousand twenty one. 
the other one is delivery, which is trying to make a bit of a comeback. That has also been, uh, you know, touching new lows uh, all of last week, 319. And then there is Map My India, uh, which is an old company, of course. I mean, it's been around for a long time, uh, but uh, listed about a year ago, 1142, 1143. It's trying to make a comeback uh, as well. So that's the space uh, which has seen a fair bit of action. Now, a quick programming reminder for our uh, viewers. Uh, CNBC TV 18 has compiled a list of the top 20 stocks to watch this year. It's a carefully curated list of companies that warrant a closer look in 2023 based on a multitude of factors. The factors could be things like growth prospects, new launches in the case of uh, product companies, uh, potential management changes or management changes which are already in effect and we'll see the impact of it play out, reforms for, for government companies, etc., etc. Uh, as a disclaimer, and this is something we want to make absolutely clear, this is not uh, a recommendation list, but a list of companies which have meaningful triggers, catalysts lined up uh, this year. Tune into CNBC TV 18 tomorrow at 10 a.m. when we will give you a sneak peek into the names and reveal the list henceforth. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm sure you are too. 20 stocks to watch out for in 2023. Just a disclaimer, these are not recommendations. These are purely stocks that you need to watch out for for any kind of business development. Let's shift focus now to the commodity markets. Manisha Gupta is joining in. Manisha, what's the one commodity that you're tracking this morning? Well, I'm looking at metals, Sonia, and this is a sector that has continued to gain in. Uh, December was a great month, and January has started on that note, and we are trading quite positive for most of these metals. But I am looking at copper prices because we are trading at a seven-month highs onto this one. So the international markets have continued to hold above that $9,400 uh, a ton mark, and the Indian markets have continued to hold above 750 mark as well, so 781 on your screens here. Markets are looking at the Chinese local premiums continue to surge. I mean, this week is a holiday, but last week it was a great premium. Not Right from $37 in the month of December to $50 a ton is what we've seen last week trade in sense of China. Well, a privately owned company, Micro Group's financial woes is something that has led to buying from the fragmented group that has taken premiums up. And then production glitches that we've seen in most of Southern America is something that has been building its premium in case of prices there. This is a Fitch report which says that last year we saw 1.5% of growth in case of demand and 2023 could see a 4.4% growth in sense of demand and the supplies are not expected to increase in that way and that has been supportive. There also was a statement from Eurasian Resources Group overnight which says that prices may gain 10 to 20% in 2023. So while it's a broad range but at least a 10% of gain in case of copper prices is what uh, the street is working in sense of that. While the production has been a concern, the inventories have continued to decline as well. So copper inventories in the global markets right now are less than four days of consumption. Zinc inventory is less than one day of global consumption. So these are a couple of metals which have continued to do quite well for themselves. Concerns on U.S. hitting its debt ceiling limit is something that markets get jittery all the time when we are approaching those, uh, those dates there. It always gets resolved, but even then some choppiness is what the street can expect. The fourth quarter GDP numbers on Thursday is yet another important factor that the street will keep an eye on. In the meanwhile, to put a report card on your screens, we have seen copper prices gain up 4.5% on a week-on-week -week basis. And in last one month, it has been a 12% of a jump up already for a metal, which is known as a green metal, important for energy transition and for EV as a sector as well. So that is the one metal that has continued to run up. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, up next on the other side of the break, we'll be joined by V. Vedyanathan, the Managing Director and CEO at IDFC First Bank to discuss their Q3 numbers. Stay tuned. IDFC First Bank has reported a strong set of numbers. Uh, deposits have grown 43%. I mean, that's a huge growth. Uh, advances as well up over 26% and most importantly, the net interest margins have risen by almost 40 basis points to 6.36%. To give us more colour on how the bank is shaping up, V. Vaidyanathan, Managing Director and CEO of IDFC First Bank joins us. Mr. Vaidyanathan, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, uh, clearly a lot of numbers are impressive. Uh, let me start with uh, the uh, NIMS itself. 6.36 is obviously a tall number. But now there is the rising pressure of uh, deposit cost. Is this the peak or can you maintain even in the fourth quarter this kind of margins or better it? Well, things would uh, stabilize from here. Our business model is constructed somewhere around 6%. I think because of the repo raise uh, uh, that, that uh, increased recently, uh, we got a bit of a bump up. But 
we, we guide for about 6% or a little more than that. 6% uh, for FI24 or for the quarter? Even for 24, we should be able to sustain it because so, uh, that's the way our products are, yeah, because that's how our products are constructed and that's how our, our lending rate, uh, deposit rates are. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask you more about uh, your deposit rates, actually. Uh, you have a, a great 43% rise in deposits, but borrowings are also up. Now, what is the difference in cost? What is the cost of average cost of deposits? What's the average cost of borrowings? Uh, our, uh, let me just say that our uh, savings uh, rates, for example, blend, blend would probably be about 5 point something, maybe 5.2, 5.3, because we also pay four and we also pay uh, higher slabs. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, overall, I'd say that uh, maybe about 5.5% uh, or so. Okay, so no, uh, I'm asking you that question because will we see progressive replacement of borrowings by deposits and will that keep a lid on the cost of deposits? Uh, yes, uh, if, if you notice, you know, we've been running out, we're, we ran off close to about 25, we had 28,000 crores of uh, high cost bonds at mm. about 8.89% uh, maybe three years ago. Mm. Uh, that number has come down to about 18,000 crores, so obviously you paid off close to about 10, 12,000 crores. Uh, that process will continue and actually that's actually accredited to us because obviously replacing them, you know, we're replacing 8.8 5.5, it's a positive trade. Okay, okay. So there's a, there is another uh, uh, 18,000 crore that you can reprice lower, uh, which that's, will be... That's right. And that gives us enough cushion to work with, you know. Okay. If supposing, just, just to make it up, supposing interest rates in the market went up further and there's a need for deposits, we have that cushion on our hand if we have to. Right now, we have no plans to increase interest rates. Okay. But we're already healthy on margin. It gives us enough cushion to touch up the interest rates if required. So you will not, I mean, a lot of banks are tapping the CD market now. You don't find the need to, uh, you know, for ALM or for whatever reason, to tap the CD market and pay a little higher. No, no, we don't need to. Because our deposit is coming so strong, Lata. You know, I don't know if you recollect when that discussion happened in 2018 or early 19, how, uh, how doubtful people were about our ability to raise deposits. It's coming so thick and strong. In fact, sometimes we have to calm ourselves down. Even employees listening to the program to say, not to get complacent and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep it like that. But otherwise, we are very, very happy the way we have goodwill in the market. Somehow, there's a lot of goodwill for IDFC First Bank in the market, Tata. Okay. Uh, I guess the Amitabh Bachchan effect is also working and I suppose the bank is also, uh, uh, you know, executing something well. Yes, actually, the CLSA report is particularly speaking about executing well uh, on liabilities in a tough cycle. Uh, that's their words, not mine. Uh, Mr. Vedranathan, now let me come to the loan side. Uh, what do you see as very promising? What kind of growth? Uh, even 26% uh, is a steaming rate of growth of uh, advances. What do you expect uh, in the fourth quarter and FY24? It's more like 25%, I think, not okay. 26 yes. but uh -huh. let's, let's not quibble about 100 basis points. But the uh, thing is that uh, we feel, uh, we always guide that for our kind of business, this is a multi-year, multi-decadal growth. Uh, you know, uh, so for us to say 25% right now, we guide for 20 to 25, Lata. Okay. The thing is, Lata, that our loan book at about uh, 1,50,000 crores uh, is, uh, believe it or not, less than 1% of India's credit. 1%. Of course. So um, we have really good capabilities, good credit underwriting capabilities, very low NPA. Um, this can be, this can go at 20%, 25% for a long time. Okay. No, but that that is the space everyone is competing for. I mean, from SBI to HDFC Bank to ICICI Bank, everyone is competing for retail loans, the space where you are. Uh, that's why I'm asking whether, uh, you know, this kind of a uh, rate of growth can be maintained. Yeah, 2025 is not a big deal. You know, you see, all banks are growing at, in that zone. So we are not, I can't call ourselves very unique. Okay. Because you see, all numbers are coming in that zone. Yeah, uh, they're coming more at 20. I guess uh, in your case, the base will also be, uh, the, the banking sector is growing at 17. In fact, the, yes. the last number was 15. So, yes, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 25 still looks better. W uh, would, what is the secured and unsecured portion? So, before we come to that, the uh, so the base for our bank is uh, 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 low. And, you know, whether secured or unsecured, base meaning, you know, we are, we are maybe five years old, other banks are maybe 20, 25, 30 years old, and so on. So, uh, with regard to uh, secured and secured, Lata, the key thing to understand actually is that uh, India has now developed a very uh, all in, very good guardrails around uh, lending. So, whether secured and unsecured, they're all behaving very similar. 
um, in terms of asset quality, we'll come to asset quality if you, if you have time for that. But let me just uh, uh, talk about uh, the fact that uh, the key, key, very key factor that has come in the country is uh, cash flow lending. Mm. So literally, you're able to see the money in the bank of the customer, and then you're able to lend against that cash. So, you, 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 so that actually is making a huge difference to asset quality. And um, th th that's what we're shooting for. And what you're saying is that even if it is unsecured lending, you're able to see the cash so much that you wouldn't worry. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you'll never say we're never worry. Of course, you should be very careful. No worry but, the, less. Thing, but still, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, the I mean, percentage of, course, of unsecured lending? Let me, let me answer that previous question just a little more, Latha, because it's very important to note. Suppose you're lending to a party, suppose a micro entrepreneur. We are able to look through the bank statement of account in a PDF format for a period of, say, six months to 12 months. We're able to see the balance in the account between the first to the fifth of the month. So supposing the balance is, say, 10 lakh rupees. Now we know customer can honor, say, 4 lakh rupees as installment. Then we reverse calculate that 4 lakhs, the tenor, and found the... So when you give money to cash in the bank, mm. now it cash is also security because the money is trapped in the bank. Got it. So think about when you call it unsecured, we should know that it is secured by cash in the bank. It is secured by your ability to pull out money from the bank because it's an installment. You're not waiting for the customer to pay you. You're pulling money from the bank. No, and thirdly, I, credit I, bureaus have become very effective. There are four credit bureaus in India. I take your point. Great. Yeah, so that's a, also very good security. Yeah, I'm sorry so, I'm so, trying so, to hurry you because I've yeah, been yeah. told I'm out of time. So I just oh, yeah, wanted yeah. to tell you, you know, your consumer loans is your biggest chunk, 20,000 crore. And you're yes. growing very fast in credit card. In both these cases, you don't have long PDFs uh, or annual. So, I mean, would no. you worry about those loans? No, no, we, 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 we absolutely in credit cards um, book is very, very well. You know, gross NPA is very low, net is very low. But uh, in durables, typically tenors are only nine months. So if there's any problem, you come to know very, very quickly. Average okay. tenor of a consumer world is four, to, believe it or not, four to five months. Okay. So the cycle pays back very fast. If you, if there's any problem, you come to know within four, five months. Okay. So broadly speaking, Lata, just to keep it simple for your uh, for, for your viewers, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, our SMA, which is really a really good benchmark. Uh, it's a SMA 1 and 2, as mm. you understand it, you know, 30 DPD, 90 DPD portfolio pre-NPA stage. Yes. That is only 1% now, just 1. So you can just imagine that, you know, there can't be NPA built up, there's no portfolio in the pre-NPA stage. So we are very comfortable. Your viewers can be can breathe easy. The bank Fair is doing very well. No, no, thank you for part. giving me the number, which would have been my next question, but I was running out of time. Thank you very much, Mr. Vaidhiradhan, for joining us with all those important details. Uh, that's the word from... IDFC, the stock is up about uh, uh, over about one percent at this point of time. Wrap up on Bazaar trading ideas on chart prices.